The teenager known as the Barefoot Bandit is being extradited to Washington State to face charges. He eluded police for two years and is accused of stealing cars, boats and planes. The 19-year-old has also become something of a folk hero and has a devoted following on Facebook. If convicted, he will become the latest in a long line of criminals to achieve celebrity status. But Victoria police, who got into a shootout with a legendary bank robber, say there is nothing glamorous about ruining people's lives. A News reporter Andrew Johnson has the story. On what had been a quiet Wednesday morning, Beacon Hill Park is crawling with police armed with shotguns. They're looking for notorious bank robber Stephen Reed, who entered a nearby Royal Bank dressed as a police officer and minutes later hopped into a waiting car with more than $90,000. Reed and a partner sped through James Bay, pursued by police, including Sergeant Bill Trudeau, who was on a motorcycle and dodging bullets. Uh, Stephen Reed, as it turns out, was sort of hanging out the passenger window and he was, he was pounding off rounds. Reed was eventually caught and sentenced to 18 years in prison. He admitted he had relapsed into drug addiction at the time of the robbery, which came after many years of crime-free living with his wife, Susan Musgrave. It was clearly not your normal bank robbery. But his life in the 1970s and 80s is the stuff of legend. He was a member of the Stopwatch Gang, making millions robbing banks all over North America, and even getting away with $700,000 in gold bars from Ottawa Airport. You know, you know how much fun, fun it is to rip them bags open, get all that money out, have fun with your friends, and, and you look at things back and you say, yeah, you know, I did it. I did it better than, 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 than anybody's been doing it. While in prison, Reed wrote the semi-autobiographical Jack Rabbit Parole, released in 1986, that earned him rave reviews and the love of his future wife. Royal Roads Communications professor Michael Reel says the story of Stephen Reed and the Stopwatch Gang falls right into the classic style of folk hero criminals. The Stopwatch Gang had that uh, quality of being polite to the people as they were holding them up, telling them this won't take long, and with the stopwatch hanging around Stephen Reed's neck. Real says colorful nicknames like the Stopwatch Gang and the Barefoot Bandit follow in the tradition of Billy the Kid and Wild Bill Hickok. And the story of the bandit, 19-year-old Colton Harris Moore escaping authorities for two years, allegedly stealing planes he taught himself to fly, and being suspected of committing many crimes shoeless, fascinates the public. There's a danger in glorifying uh, criminals like this. It's, it's not a good role model. But there also is an attraction in the anti-authority, kind of thumbing his nose at the authorities. Trudeau suggests anyone who looks up to prolific criminals needs a reality check. Stephen Reed walks in there disguised as, as a police officer, sticks a shotgun in somebody's, in a lady's face, uh, who's somebody's mom or sister or wife. Uh, and makes them think that the last thing they're going to see is the business end of the shotgun he's carrying. And the Victoria police officer who once rounded a corner on Dallas Road to discover Reed leaned over the hood of his getaway car set up for an ambush, says the criminals we look up to simply ruin people's lives. You go to work one day, you come back, somebody's kicked the door into your house, stolen personal items, God knows what else they've done in your place. How do you feel? You know, yeah, that's pretty glamorous. I, I don't think so. It's not glamorous at all. It's really cowardly. The Barefoot Bandit's case is set to go before a grand jury in Seattle. As for Stephen Reed, he has apologized for the 1999 robbery of this bank on Cook Street, which was uncharacteristically violent compared to his heyday in the Stopwatch Gang. We contacted Reed, who lives in the area and is out on day parole for an interview, but he declined, saying he does not want to in any way jeopardize an upcoming parole hearing. In Victoria, Andrew Johnson, A News.